Hi, I'm John Krupe from Jack B. I'm the CTO, and today I want to tell you about mashups and specifically enterprise mashups. So I want to give you a little brief history of how we got here. It all starts with the browser. We had this grand vision a few years ago that the browser was really going to be the business container of choice, and this was going to be ubiquitous outside of just the consumer side of web and actually go into the enterprise side of web. But we had a problem. We didn't really know how to run applications in the browser. We have HTML and it wasn't an interactive model. And then when around 2005 when we saw enterprise Ajax come about in the browser with Google Maps, we said, hey, you know, this might actually be a technology that helps us in the business. But we said, what are we going to connect to? Because in the enterprise, we don't just connect to websites. We actually connect, connect to enterprise data. So in the back end here, what was getting a lot of play was SOA, SOA, Service Oriented Architecture. And SOA is really about loosely coupled systems and providing data, business data, granular data. So when we saw Ajax coming around, and we saw that it was pretty powerful and that it could do a lot of the things that we wanted it to do, we said, what if we can actually create some sort of platform that allows us in the enterprise to have connectivity to SOA? And we knew there was going to be a lot of things going on here. But in the enterprise, we need a lot of things to happen that we don't have in the consumer side. We need security, and we need governance. And in order to have this, we said that we have to do a lot more to get the browser to connect to SOA. Because in the consumer side of the world, in consumer side of Ajax or mashups, everything goes from the browser out. And the idea is to get the browser to connect to everything. In the enterprise, everything has to go through here, and there's typically a firewall that exists here. So how do we get from here to here and how do we secure this channel? And how do we do it in a way that's non-invasive and we can incrementally add this capability as time goes on? So fast forward a few years, and now I'm going to tell you how Enterprise Mashups is actually making a play in the history of computing. OK, so now what we're going to do is we're going to look at what does it mean to be an Enterprise Mashup. And one of the things about Enterprise Mashups is the concept of an ecosystem. Just like the web is ubiquitous and has web servers of all different technologies and browsers and different technologies and laptops and desktops, it all seems to work together. Enterprise mashups, the way that this is going to work is the same concept of an ecosystem, but it looks a little different. And what we have on the back end here are a set of services. And part of the ability to even do enterprise mashups today is the big bet that technology is becoming standardized and there are standards out there to do a lot of the things we need to do with SOA. So when we talk about things like WSDL and SOAP, or we talk about RSS and REST, we also have things like databases, which is throughout an organization, but can also be exposed as a service. When we start looking at this and now saying, well, we're going to have a, a world where everything starts exposing itself as a service. And if we have the ability to get at this data and everything starts exposing itself as a service, then this data just isn't in my local data center anymore. This could be in my partner's data center. This could be in Salesforce. This could be internal, external. It doesn't matter. The goal and the driver behind enterprise mashups is to be able to make this look like one big virtualized layer of data services and be able to consume it and mash it up in a way that doesn't require IT organization to have a lot of write a lot of code to go and deploy and to do all these sorts of things that take a long time. We want to be able to get at this data in a secure and governed way and be able to let business users and analysts actually create these mashups. So if I start moving to this, and we see this happening today, we see all the major vendors out there, SAP, Oracle, IBM, they're all putting out services according to these standards. And we look at somebody, uh, companies like Google and eBay that allow you both REST and WSDL access to the services. We can, in fact, do much of this today. And now as organizations keep opening up more and more of their data according to this, we can start exposing the whole back end set here as an ecosystem of services. But where does it go? 
Well, that's the other thing that's happening here, is we're actually looking at innovation in the front end that we haven't had in 10 years. We pretty much had the browser for the last 10 years and we had HTML as content. Now we have things like the iPhone where we can do some sophisticated applications. We have some of the Web 2.0 browsers such as NetVibes and PageFlakes. We also have uh, wikis and blogs and we have all these things that we can start pushing data in and they're, it's all web content. And then we also have some of the 1.0 portals too that we have today that we want to be able to capitalize. So we have all these different front ends and web pages and we said, well look, let's look at this here, and look at all these services and look at the fact that we can no longer just publish to one destination. We can't just publish to a website. We have to be able to take what we've created, put a face on it because ultimately this is the user and we have to get it to a destination. So the idea here is that we create mashups that live behind the firewall and are traveling to various services in very small numbers here. We're talking two or three services or maybe up to six or seven for a mashup. We're not talking thousands. This is an EAI or EII. And users create this or business analysts create this. Now we want to get the data to one of these destinations or all of them. And the key here is enterprise widgets. And in our technology, we call this mashlets at Jack B. And a mashlet is an enterprise mashup widget that is syndicatable to all different destinations. Why is this important? Because if we're saying that this is moving towards the user, we want to be able to create this mashup that's consuming one or more services, and we want to present it to the user in a way that they can interact with this. This isn't just a view-only technology. This is interactive. You think about what we talked prior about Ajax being this interactive model. Now we take that and we make it small, and now you can start looking at widgets that are connecting and pulling your opportunities and prospects out of SAP, or mashing that up with your internal database, taking data from Salesforce and integrating that with SAP and your internal database, and pushing out a mashlet that says, well, you can go and pull this mashlet just as a script and throw it in your Java, in your iPhone. You can get it on your, in your Net Vibes or PageFlakes. You can really have it wherever you need it. The interesting part of this is that as you create these, you don't have to push them out to anywhere. You can make them available for the users to go pick and choose what they want. So instead of users looking at a mashup as a bunch of things hooked together or wired together, now you're looking at a mashup as a widget or as a mashlet that you have a UI that you can take, you can customize, you can skin it, and now you can push it out. All of a sudden, you've opened up this vast array of new destinations or front ends, and you're interacting in a secure and governed way to your back-end data and your internal systems. This is the power of enterprise mashups. The security that you get in the governance, so it's controlled what you access, but the flexibility and agility to start creating these mashups of your own internal data and external and syndicating out to whatever you need. And there's one other place that it ends up here, which is probably the mashup platform of choice for business users. It's Excel. Excel is where business analysts tacit workers, knowledge workers, they live. What do they do in Excel? They're copying and pasting data daily from all these different systems. They're taking everything that a mashup does and manually is copying and pasting it into a spreadsheet. And then how do they collaborate? They email it out. Well, we don't have to do that anymore. We take this data, we mash it up, and we push it right into Excel. Not only that, we can take portions of Excel, different worksheets, and publish those as a service itself. Just like a database is not your traditional SOA style service, we can make it a service. Just like Excel, wouldn't, you wouldn't even think of Excel as a service, we can actually push Excel data out to be a set of services that have entitlements and security and policy around it. Now you're really getting this whole thing to work together. And mashups, the key part of mashups, is they're a consumer of all this. They don't produce web services, they actually produce mashups that can be consumable and shared and syndicated as widgets. 
So I hope that in just the last 10 minutes you got a good sense of how we got here, just thinking about RIA and Ajax connecting to SOA, and now looking at the new world here where we have SOA-styled services that exist internal, external, and everywhere, and enterprises can now can leverage this technology and get this data out to the users in the ways they need it. This is John Krupe from Jackby. Thank you.